One of the most common questions that I get is how can I upscale an image so that it's no longer blurry? Here's the image that I'm gonna be using. It's an image of Wolverine and it's not very big. It's a JPEG file. It's only 736 pixels by 1129 pixels. That's pretty tiny. Now it looks pretty good on my computer monitor, but you'll notice when I scroll in, the hair starts getting fuzzy and you'll notice some of the facial features here start getting fuzzy as well. This is not a super clean, high quality picture, but in this video, I'm gonna share with you three methods that you can use to try to upscale an image like this. So I'm gonna share with you these three scenarios, but you'll have to make your own mind up about which method would work best for your particular image. Method number one is to use an online resource to either change the dots per inch or to upscale the image and make it larger. So the first option here is to change the DPI. So I'm on convert.town and there's an image DPI changer here. I can change the image to whatever I choose. So I'm just simply gonna choose the image and then it's gonna ask me to resave it. So here I'm gonna choose my original image, which is 736 by 1129. And now it's asking me to save the image with the different DPI information. Okay, and when I've saved it, you'll notice there's no real difference here in the size. The one image has a DPI of 72, and the other DPI now has been changed to 400 DPI. Now this is just the metadata inside. The actual image is not gonna really look any different. And here I've got them side by side. I'm gonna zoom this right in to about 314. We can see it's starting to get blurry here. Same thing on this side about 314, and you'll see there's really no difference between the images. All it's done is it simply changed the metadata inside the file to say that it's 300 dots per inch, but it's not really making the file look any crisper or cleaner. The other method is to actually upscale the image. So here I'm using a tool, free tool called Upscale, and I'm going to select my image. Okay, so here's my original low res image, and then I'm going to select Digital Art, I'm going to change the upscale now to say four times. That's gonna change the actual image file now from 736 to 2944, and now I'll click upscale. And depending on the size of the upscale, it may take a minute, it may take 10 minutes, it might even take an hour, depending on the size, if you're making a really, really large file. All right, so this took about one minute. We can see the old file is on the left. We can see the new file now is on the right. Okay, and we can take a look now on the left-hand side. This is 67%. This is the original image. So when I go to 100%, that's the size of it. On the right side, this is my upscaled image. And when I go to 100%, look at how much bigger it is. Now, when I really scroll in the original, you'll see that the forehead, for example, is pretty fuzzy. That's the same size. And you'll see that upscale did an amazing job of having clean rendered lines now. It's not gonna be perfect. It's trying to make a guess here using artificial intelligence but that's pretty great. It's a lot cleaner than obviously the one on the left. Method number two is to use a graphics program to resize or modify your image. So you could use Photoshop, you could use Affinity Photo. In this case, I'm gonna use PhotoP, which is free and it's online. You just go to PhotoP.com. It's like a Photoshop clone. So here I've got my image opened. I'm gonna go here to image. I'm gonna to go to image size. We can see here it has my width, and my height and my DPI. So I could just simply change this. I could do 3000, for example, and it'll automatically change the height because it's linked. And then I could change the dots per inch to 300 and I'll click OK. OK, so I just zoomed out on this massive image now that I've created. And you can see here the pixel count. I've got it here. It's over 11,000 pixels wide. Now this looks great until I zoom in. So when I zoom in, you'll see it starts to get blurry. So it's not really adding any more information. It's just made the file size larger. It's made the image bigger. So this isn't really an upscale. This isn't what we mean when we talk about upscaling, but this could work sometimes depending on the image that you're using. The third option is to create a vector file. A vector file is infinitely scalable, meaning you can make it as large as you want and it'll stay crisp and clean. Here I am inside of Inkscape. Inkscape is a free vector software tool. Highly recommend, you could download it at inkscape.org, completely free to use. Pretty easy to create a vector here. I've got my original image opened. I'm gonna simply click on it. I could move it around if I want. And I'm gonna go here to path, trace bitmap, then I'm gonna get over here on the right hand side, a bunch of options. Don't stress out about the options, just click update preview and you'll see if it looks good or not. If it's too light, make the threshold darker. If it's too dark, 
make the threshold lighter. So I typically will shoot for around 50 to 60%, then I'll just simply click apply. It'll look like nothing happened, but oh, look at this. There's a double right here. This is the vector file right here on the right hand side. Now you'll notice the mouth, when I zoom in, isn't super great. So I'm gonna actually try this one more time. I'm gonna delete it, click on my original image, make my threshold a bit darker. I'm gonna to go to 66, update preview. I'll click apply and we'll see that's a bit better. I like the way that looks. I'm gonna simply click out the original image, hit the delete button, and now we can see this is a very clean vector. So if you're making a stencil for the wall, for example, or stickers, or if you'd like to get really clean lines, this is a great way to do it. A vector is editable, meaning I can click on the image and I can see there's individual nodes. So if I wanted to change something, so for example, if I wanted to make the mouth a bit different, I could highlight these nodes, delete them out, and then I could take this node and I could stretch it over, make it a bit bigger, smaller, whatever I wanted to do. So you can actually change out the images inside the larger vector. It's a very cool software tool. I've got lots of videos on Inkscape on my channel. I like using Inkscape a lot, especially for black and white images. This is a very crisp, clean looking design. Now keep in mind, when you trace a bitmap, you may have little stragglers that are left over, little dots and things like that. So I'm gonna click on edit, and you'll see here, when I click on the image, right here on the right hand side, there's a couple little stragglers right here. Simply drag over the nodes, you'll see they're highlighted, and now I can click delete, and that will delete them out completely. So now I've got a nice, clean vector suitable for export and use. Now you might be asking, how do I know how many DPI this image is? Well, the beauty of a vector is you can make this as big as you want. So what I'm gonna do is over on the right hand side, I'm gonna click export. And we can see here the size of the file, the width and the height. Now it's set to page. So I wanna change this now to selection. So the selection now is 499 by 111 and it's only 96 DPI. So I'll change that now to 300. That'll change the width and the height. And I can also make this now very large if I wanted. So for example, I often will export file sizes that are well over 10,000 pixels wide. For example, here we go, 11,000 by 26,000 at 300 DPI. And I'll export this as a PNG file. I'll click the export button. And we can see the difference here now in Explorer. Here is my original image, 736 by 1129. Here is my output. And we'll see it's a PNG file. So there are no DPI involved in a PNG file. It's a straight up pixels. And you can see here it's 11,000 by 26,000 wide. If you wanna do a big JPEG file, you can do that as well. Just simply change down here to JPEG. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. A few different ways to make your images larger and hopefully easier to see. Here's another video on how you can have some fun in the world of graphic design.